Please be advised that everything in my video is purely for entertainment purposes. These are purely my thoughts and opinions and are subjective. I must advise you to please do your own research. All media users found on the public domain and are fair use and fair dealings. Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing okay. I hoped uh, I was going to have more of a result to do this video. Um, at the moment, at the time of filming, we have not heard the results whether Megan is going to have to go to full trial. But given everything that seems to have been coming out this week alone, I definitely think that Associated News have very, very good reasons for this wanting to go to trial. There are too many things that have changed. Megan is changing her statements and we're not talking a tiny little tweak a slight adjustment of the date you know it was a couple of years ago maybe she thought someone was at a particular meeting and they weren't no 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 these are full-blown massive changes to her statements so just a quick infill on the dogs they're doing absolutely great we've had no problems Leela's head is healing brilliantly the vet's very happy they've been fine if anything they're probably a bit more affectionate with each other I don't know if this was the thing that you know Leela pushed her luck too much and now she has gone all right I let you dominate me sometimes but not over food so I don't know but obviously I'm being very very cautious making sure that they are definitely kept in separate rooms when they have their food. Also I'm going to take the time to thank everyone that has still donated to my channel for all of you that have subscribed it is a massive massive help for keeping my channel going really. YouTube have made it quite clear that if channels do not grow then they're going to start to filter them out and basically cancel people. So so the more of you that subscribe, the longer I can keep going. So thank you very much. So when this started at the beginning of the week, we heard first from Megan's lawyers. To say they were laying it on thick is an absolute understatement. The statements read that it was a triple barreled invasion to Megan's privacy. Megan suffered anguish on the assault of her family life. Wow, there has been so many statements that have come out to do with her pain, her devastation, her heartbreak, and it's like, you're the one that literally stirred all of this up. You're the one that got your friends to leak the letter. But I'll come on to that. Personally, as many of us feel, Thomas is the one that has actually suffered in this entire scenario. He is the one that has been vilified. He is the one that has been thrown to the wolves. Now, I know some people will say, oh, Thomas deserved it. He sold his daughter down the river. No, he didn't. The only thing that Thomas did before the wedding was he had pictures taken of himself to try and improve his image. He wasn't selling videos of Megan when she was a little girl. He wasn't showing, selling private pictures of her when she graduated at school. He was not doing anything to do with Megan's life. The photographs were of him trying to make it look like that he was exercising, he was having wedding suit fittings. So I don't understand why Megan suddenly turned on him and hated him for this. But as most of us are gathered, there's obviously more to the story than what we have been told. The fact that Harry never met him or was not concerned about meeting him or any member of Megan's family, she must have told some serious whoppers to make Harry go, oh no, no, it's fine. We don't ever have to meet them or see them. So Thomas's witness statement is actually very damning for Meghan's case. His witness statement doesn't paint Meghan in a very good light. One of the main reasons being is he admits that he had the letter for some time and he never spoke of the letter. This is actually factual. If you look at the date of the letter, she sent it to Thomas in August and we didn't actually hear from uh, Thomas at all until after her friends spoke about the letter in People magazine. So Thomas did not sell that letter. He did not just give it to the mail on Sunday. It was done in complete defense of himself after her friends had released the information. And they didn't release all of the letter. They released enough to paint Thomas yet again in a bad light. So he's got every right to want to defend himself and who can blame him? Megan has tried to sell the reason why she did this letter was she was begging for peace. She just wanted her dad to to stop taking advantage of her but there's nothing really in that letter that kind of says that it's always left a sour taste in my mouth because when this letter came out she is the way that it was explained if you are having a go at someone for something that they've done they're well aware of what they've done but for every admonishment that she gave him for every time that she told him off she would do a paragraph beforehand explaining the story and how her feelings and everything to then go on and that to me means it was always meant for public consumption the letter in itself there's not a single mention of her father she doesn't ask after his health once. It's all very much my wedding, my life, my me. Now she is the one admittedly saying that she's been hurt by everything her father's done, but there's no kind of, there's nothing in there to turn around and say, Harry should have met you, I should have done something. 
uh, the blame is thoroughly being shoved onto Thomas. You could understand if they'd had a terrible relationship throughout, you know, her childhood and later on in life, but she was on very, very good terms with her father right up until she started dating Harry. This is Thanksgiving, November 2016, where she's still praising her dad and her mum. Her TIG blog was awash with all of these praises and everything that she said to the world about how her dad was her amazing person. All the cutesy stories about freckles and how he did things for her growing up and she was so grateful for him. Then bang, she meets Harry. She's estranged from him. Do the math. Thomas did not fit in her new life, so she discarded him. But she had to make up a story because she would come across cold-blooded if she didn't have a decent story to get rid of him. So first of all, Thomas didn't help himself by doing those pictures, but this letter, she has even admitted that she wrote this letter with the public in mind because she thought that Thomas, because of his behaviour, he was always going to release it to the media, but he didn't. Megan's letter was very much to repair the relationship with her father. She knew in the heart of hearts that this was going to be released to the papers. Thomas has a record of this. This is exactly the man that she knows. And so many of those things in that letter were written with the public in mind. She very much wanted to set the record straight. You've got to be careful what you say because once it's out on the internet and the TV, it's out there forever. Now, one of the most shocking things that's come out this week is Omid has actually thrown Harry under the bus. I'd say more under a train, really. It's, um, it's bizarre. Both Harry and Meghan and Omid and Carolyn have denied that they ever spoke to each other regarding this book or the letter which has now come up. This is why it's all being discussed finding freedom. Harry may not remember her, but Omid has done a statement to the court and it actually states every single time that Harry has met Carolyn, that he is literally going, well, Harry, that's not really accurate because these are several instances when you met her. In London and in Florida 2016 for the Invictus Games, Carolyn actually produced his interview with Michelle Obama. He met her twice in 2012 in Brazil and in the Queen's Jubilee celebrations and then she interviewed him in 2009 in New York. So Omid's not just saying oh, Harry's met Carolyn, Harry, Harry is lying because he met Carolyn here here here. Why on earth would Omid say that? I'm, I'm a bit perplexed by this one, because I'm like, he's not throwing Megan under the bus. I feel that's Omid very much. Maybe he's defending Carolyn, but he's going, no, Harry is definitely lying. Why would Omid do that? Now, there are rumours obviously circulating that Omid is definitely Team Megan. And there are rumours, I don't know how true they are, that there is a divorce in the works. This is why they've postponed Megxit. And who knows? There's been divorce rumours going on since the day that they married. I don't know what's true anymore, and I often admit this. Now, obviously, this court case is very, very detailed. There's been lots of statements that have been released. There are lots of YouTubers and blogs that are out there that detail this court case in absolute fine detail. I don't want to do that because I find it completely boring, if I'm honest. So I'm just going to throw at you a few of the gossipy kind of like crammed together stuff that I personally found oh, shocking. If you want more detailed explanations, please feel free. Harry Markle blog is always, always on point. Murky Meg has done videos on this. Lots of people are dissecting it, but I just can't be asked if I'm completely honest with you. We like having a laugh on my channel and reading someone else's court case. So the Daily Mail have put forward a little bit of evidence stating that a senior source within the royal family, I'm presuming it's staff rather than an actual member of the royal family, actually got in touch with them and threw Sarah Latham, I think that's how you say her name, under the bus. Now, she obviously worked with Meghan for some time briefly with Sussex Royal, forever short that was. But they have stated, this royal source, that Sarah actually performed the job of fact-checking. She was the middleman between Meghan, which is what Meghan has now had to admit in court papers, that she didn't directly speak to them, but she gave information to. So Sarah has now been pulled into this, along with um, a couple of other palace, uh, ex-palace staff. We've got Samantha Cohen, we've got Jason No, we've got uh, Christian, he was the PR guy. So lots of people are being dragged into this, which is typical of the way this court case is going. It's everybody else's fault, apart from Meghan. So originally Meghan had said that she had nothing to do with finding freedom. She and Harry both stated that. Then it turned out they did have something to do with it. And now it's come out that it was actually various people that worked for Meghan that were passing on information. Sarah Latham being the one that was fact checking, making sure that they had all of the details correct. How can that be dressed up in any other way that Meghan gave information to the Finding Freedom authors, which is what anyone with a brain cell knows? 
but it's the fact that she has lied to the court, which I'm sure has probably raised a few eyebrows, but it actually gets a little bit juicier. Sunshine Sachs have also been dragged into it that it's been admitted by the same um, senior palace source that Sunshine Sachs opened the doors for the authors. So why is Sunshine Sachs helping Meghan while she was still part of the royal family feeding this information? It's one of the many lies of things that Meghan had to give up everything for her prince and in truth she gave up nothing as now gains even more. So as I said in the beginning of the video, Meghan has been changing her statements left, right and centre and it's not looking good. As I said, these are not little tweaks, little adjustments, dot the I, cross the T. These are full blown change of statement. The first golden nuggets. Remember, Meghan's got the five friends, call them, I think they called them like A to E. So she disclosed in her first statement that she told friend A about the letter but never shared the contents. Friend A then at some point went to People magazine and discussed it, which has obviously got holes in it because how could they discuss the letter if Meghan didn't share the contents with them? But the change of statement has now changed to, and this is just downright embarrassing, Meghan admits that she shared the letter with her husband, with two of her friends, so A and B, with her mum, with her solicitor, and the Kensington Palace communications team. That's quite a bit of a change, isn't it? So when this then came out and she said she admitted that she told um, Jason, who worked for the Kensington Palace communications team, she discussed that she was going to do a letter and that was it. This has since changed. That she actually did several drafts of this letter with Jason's help, with the Kensington Palace communications team, helping her to draft this letter. There's been lots of edits, lots of back and forth. Bear in mind it was an electronic copy. Why not just send an email? There you go, cut, paste, done. But no, she had to handwrite it. Again, is this the actions of someone that didn't want that letter to be disclosed to the public? No, I'm not going to send a private secure email that might self implode after 30 seconds of my dad reading it. No, no, no. I'm going to painstakingly copy out a letter. And it doesn't end there. It's now shifted that she's trying to say that Kensington Palace communications team made her write that letter. They decided the contents that was in that letter. And to top it off, Meghan has now stated that two senior royals, and it's supposed to be potentially Camilla and Charles, actually told her to write that letter. So this is Meghan going, wasn't me, nothing to do with me. It was everybody else that I can think of. Now, you imagine being Camilla and Charles, Meghan going, oh, it's so bad, what's happening with my dad? Oh, it's so bad, it's so bad. Oh, have you thought about writing him a letter? To tell him how you feel, you know, get your emotions off your chest. Who hasn't said that to a friend at some point or done it to their self? Oh, I'm, I'll write a letter to someone to just get everything on paper. She's now twisted that round and put it in the court papers that she was instructed to write this letter. It's, it's, they haven't named Charles and Camilla, but you know. But remember, this was a terribly private, devastating letter that was never meant for public consumption. That was always just meant for Thomas Markle's eyes. Shit! <laughs> Meghan has never taken advice since she joined the royal family. You know, she's kicked off, she's made Catherine cry, she's fallen out with pretty much, you know, most members of her staff, people that have left, anyone that tried to advise her, actually to help her get along within the royal family, to help her adjust to royal life, she didn't want to know. So why is she all of a sudden going, yeah, Camilla and Charles forced me to write this letter. You can just imagine them over her like the Spanish Inquisition with a big light bulb on her head. Megan's being forced to write a great letter. It's got more holes than a block of Swiss cheese. This letter was created for one purpose and one purpose only. And it was always meant to go to the public. And it was meant to vilify Thomas and make her look like this angelic little victim where her father has done terrible things to her. And there might have been a large number of the public that would have fallen for it if Thomas had leaked the letter himself, but he didn't. He kept it quiet. He didn't share it with the media. He didn't do anything. So no one had heard of this letter. This must have frustrated Meghan, especially after painstakingly writing out that letter. So this is when the story came up to get her friends to push this letter through People magazine. Sadly, Thomas at this point did take the bait and he reacted. So Meghan's plan did work at this stage. But can you really blame Thomas? I'd imagine he is upset and he is hurt and he's got every bloody right to be. But the long short of it is, nobody knew about the letter until People magazine. So why isn't she suing People magazine? Why isn't she suing her friends that released it to People magazine? Well, that's because the trails all lead back to Meghan.
It's clearly obvious at this point that there's been lots and lots of porcupines being told. Now it is getting to the stage where, you know, it's actually going to court. Meghan changing her statements that severely, it doesn't look good with the court. Because surely you know when you give that first initial statement, oh, I spoke about it to a friend who I actually shared letters um, with, you know, communications team, with my mum, with my solicitor, with my husband, with two other friends. So she has outright lied to the court. It's funny that our media are not actually discussing all of these really big fibs that she's told. So this is why I'm doing this video to point out, these are huge. These aren't little, as I said, little tweaks. This is outright, she's pretty much changed her story. Not once, not twice, but three times. So now the outcome is that she didn't really write the letter. She was told to write the letter by members of the royal family and Kensington Palace communications team. They pretty much told her what to put in the letter and all she did at the end of it was just hand copy it and send it to her dad. But wait, it gets worse. Someone from Kensington has now got in touch with the media and they're doing it to vilify Meghan. The problem is with Harry and with Meghan, no one is out to vilify them. They do it to themselves. And no matter which way this court case goes, whether it does go to trial, which is going to be bloody huge if it does, or if it doesn't and, you know, the judge, Justice Warby, has decided that he's heard enough evidence to rule in favour of or against, you know, either way, everything that's come out does not make Meghan look how she wanted this letter to. It's made her look like that she treated her father terribly. She never, never even asked how he was after a heart attack. No matter how angry you were, your dad still ended up in hospital with a heart attack. Not once did the words leave her lips, I hope you're okay. Even if you were pissed, I hope you're okay, dad. I want to draw a line under this. There was nothing. It's all me, myself and I. And no matter which way that you look at this court case, whether you're pro Megan, whether you're pro Thomas, it's not looking good for her side of the story, is it? So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye. If you like my video, please remember to like and subscribe. Please angry typists, you will be blocked, so save your fingers for time. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love, Taz.